Hello, everyone. Welcome to round number seven of the Chess Olympiad in Chennai, India. And one of the highlights of this round is Wesley Saw's win, an important win by Wesley Saw against Rant Melkomian of Armenia. Because in this round, Aronian sits. Okay, it was it was a very nice decision also from the part of Aronian to sit out against his former team. He is Armenian. Yeah, by blood he's Armenian. Of course, you cannot try and beat your brothers, yeah. Although it's just a game, but then you're now representing USA. It's not good. And also, if, let's say, you lose to Armenia, the U.S. might feel that uh, you give Armenia the point. So he is actually in a lose-lose situation. And without Aronian, and Shangpan also not doing really well in this Olympic, they could only get 2-2. And thanks to Wesley, thanks to his win, uh, they were able to at least tie with 2-2 because Caruana also these days is out of form, you know, losing to Sargishan in his game. So let's check out Wesley's game. It was a Karokan from Grant. Okay, knight c3, d5, knight f3, okay, the two knights, two knights Karokan. Bishop g4, h3, takes, takes. e6, bishop e2, should see five castles. Everything is just normal, knight to d7, takes on d5, takes on d5, rook d1, knight f6, d4, bishop e7, bishop d3, castles, bishop f4. Now, after bishop f4, it transposes, the Karakan transposes now into a London system type of game. Knight b8, knight e2, all right, to protect with c3. Clearance for c3, rook e8, rook e1, g6, knight into g3. Knight goes back to d7, rook e3. And here comes the exciting part of the game. Black went for e5. Wesley played a not so good move. Actually, a mistake on h6, but the opponent had a counter mistake after playing two minutes with e4. All right, but let's take a look at this position first. Wesley could have captured with d takes e5. Okay, opponent plays bishop c5. He has this e6 move. Okay, rook takes, rook takes, f takes, and queen e2. All right, black can play queen f6 here, bishop e3. But at least with the backward pawn, and if you push the pawn, this also becomes weak. Yeah, We call that one, if the pawn pushes to e5, then we have this um, hanging pawns on on the center with e5 and e5. And the, the mean, for the meantime, the e6 pawn here is a backward pawn. But Wesley went for bishop h6. It's also a tricky move because the opponent fell into it. You know, and they, after two minutes of thought, he played e4. And this is the biggest mistake of the game. I guess this is losing on the spot. Imagine that losing on the spot. You are attacking the bishop and the queen, but it loses because of rook takes brilliant rook takes e4 by Wesley. <laughs> Black have might have missed that after pawn takes on e4, Wesley has this brilliant king hunt starting with queen takes f7. After king takes, you have bishop c4 check. King f6, knight takes e4 check. King f5, g4 check. Takes rook e1. King f3, it's either rook e3 or bishop e5 mate. Now, this is reminiscent of the game by Lasker in 1912, right? When Lasker, okay, look at the position by Lasker. In this game, the opponent played queen to e7. Lasker went for queen takes h7, sacrificing the queen. He has this double check on f6, yeah. The opponent went for king h6, knight into g4, h4, g3, bishop into e2, king g2, rook to h2, the king went to g1, 
Last year went for King D2 or casting Queenside also here was a checking in here. So that could have been a brilliant miniature from Westy. The opponent did not capture the rook, but even then, after rook takes e4, this is game over. Okay, he played knight f8, but the pawn is a pawn, a rook f4, and also the number of pieces from white attacking the king is too much. f5, you have how many pieces? Four to the king takes. Okay, here, play queen d6, queen g4. Knight into g6, rook takes d5, another brilliant move by Westy. The opponent by queen f6, because if you take the rook, then this bishop takes g6. Mate is again coming up. Okay, you can move the king to h8, but after taking the rook, queen g7 is another mate, yes. All right, you have, let's say, a move like bishop f6, but I can just take, there's just too many pawns here. Yeah, it's how many? Seven against three. There are four pawns down. Yeah. So queen f6 here, g3, bishop into f8, rook f5, queen e7, bishop c4, black has an extra piece, but he cannot do anything. Bishop g5, he simply resigned. Okay, he can continue with, let's say, queen to d6, but rook f6, what do you do? Okay, queen c7 maybe. Or let's just take a look at queen c7. Then rook f7. If you go, okay, maybe queen to b8. I'm far away here, but I can take the knight on g6. If you take the rook, then queen h4, king, and then queen h6 is a mate, or even bishop f6 is a mate. So many mating nets. Yeah. So after bishop g5, he just resigned. Okay, I could say, okay, the, a miniature normally it's less than 25 moves, but black was already lost after rook takes e4 here by west. Yeah. But it would have been beautiful if the opponent actually captured. But let's take a look at this position. This is important also. Because black was better. This is actually a mistake by west in g6. Black was supposed to be better with bishop f8 here. Now, what's the point? You take, you have, then you go e4. That's the intermediate move. Wesley has to go back to d1 because he cannot capture the pawn on e4 because it has that attack on the queen and you lose a piece on f8. If you go back to d1, rook takes f8, bishop c2, and black has f5. If let's say you play bishop to b3, knight into b6, now how can you stop this f4, f3 threat? Yeah, king can just go maybe king king g7 and then you go f4 and f3. Yeah, moving out of the pin from this diagonal. All right. This was actually better for black. So uh, the lesson here, especially okay, not just the Armenian player, but the lesson here for everyone is that make use of your time, especially in critical moments. Okay, um this maybe playing blitz and bullets. Online is not a good practice because it becomes a habit. Milkomian is also known for being a good um, blitz player, but that habit actually you know, ruined this game here. E4 after two minutes of thought, it's only two minutes. Yeah, Bishop F8, Q was better by the way. Bishop F8, but with E4. It became a brilliant game for Wesley, starting with rook takes e4. Yeah, okay, okay, that was tricky, the tricky bishop a6 move. So rook takes e4 is already winning here for white. So that was it. After knight of eight, everything here for white. The number of pieces from the white side is too much to, to the king. And you're up a pawn, Wesley can just simplify and then good sacrifice, king g4. And then rook takes d5. Even here, black could just simply resign. We could say it's a miniature. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks to his opponent, thanks to that uh, e4 blunder.
it's actually a counter blunder because Wesley also blundered with bishop a6. But the biggest blunder was e4. So again, especially here, it's important an important game because you're representing your country in a team event. If Melkomian here won against Wesley, it would help his team as well. All right. That was it. Um, an important win by Wesley to help the U.S. even the match 2-2 against Armenia without the services of Levon Aronian. He sits down. That was a very gentleman act by Aronian. That's a good principle, by the way. Thanks to Aronian. So, USA could only get 2-2 as Arwana lost and also Shanklin lost on 1-4. and four. Dominguez won on 3. So, it's a tie between Ar Armenia and the USA in round number 7 of the Chess Olympiad in Chennai. Thank you guys for supporting our channel, Charles Smash Chess and Charles Smash Entertainment on Facebook and YouTube. This is Coach Oliver. Stay safe, everyone, and bye-bye. Uh,